your civics and your um, world history classes. All right, but with World War I propaganda, this is what countries did to try and make sure people from their country were willing to go fight. Because remember, at the start of the war, a lot of Americans wanted to not just not jump in the war, some of them wanted to fight on the side of the Germans. Why was that? Yeah, um, high population. All right, high what? Population. Oh, we had a high German American population, right? So people had German ancestry. So once we're in the war, the government had to convince Americans this is the right thing to do to go fight the Germans. And one thing they did was they tried to kind of dehumanize the enemy. You get the lights. All right, and with this poster right there, you can see you've got a guy that's a shadowy figure, and we can tell that's a German guy for a couple reasons. One, he's got that. Um, helmet on, and that helmet's with a spike that shows you what's, what the Germans wore. And what's he got dripping from his bayonet? Blood. Blood. Alright, it says, beat back the Hun with liberty bonds. The Hun was a traditional term um, for invaders from Germany for years, going back to Attila the Hun. But it says to beat them back with liberty bonds. That's encouraging people that even if you can't fight the war, you can still support the war effort by going and buying these liberty bonds, which is basically a public borrowing system where you're kind of letting the government borrow money to fight the war. And then you're going to get a return on that years down the road. All right, this again, the Hun, referring to the Germans, says blot out his mark. What's the mark? Handprint, a bloody handprint. A bloody handprint, right, with liberty bonds. All right, now look at this one. This isn't quite so much aimed at people that were going to war as it was the people that were working in war industries. It says, warning, consider the possible consequences if you are careless in your work. So was um, the artist in this poster trying to tell the people that work in war industries? RJ? That if you don't do a good job, you may have people flying planes just fall right out of the sky. Right. If you don't do a good job with your um, whatever you're working on, you have shoddy workmanship, you're going to hurt American soldiers. All right, this one right here again kind of shows an average American guy. Says, sure, we'll finish the job. Looks like maybe a farmer or something. You see he's got some patriotic buttons on his overalls there. And what does it look like he's trying to do? All right, reach into his pocket for money to help that Liberty Loan, which was kind of like the victory bonds. All right, what do you think these Bloody represents? Right, Bloody German Boots. Boot. Right, German Boots. And it says, keep these off the USA, buy more liberty bonds. So it's once again encouraging people to let the government borrow money. But notice that's taking it a step further. Not just saying stop the Germans for what they're doing in Europe. But that's implying that if you don't help, the Germans one day might come and attack the United States. All right, now this is another victory liberty loan poster. So public borrowing system. It says Americans all. And what do we notice about the names on that honor roll there? Yeah, Du Bois. Uh, all right, people that support the war, correct. All right, you got the boy who's you know an African American leader. You've got several other names that sound what? Several names that sound what? All right, some German. What else? Some British. All right, English. Let's look at some of these. O'Brien. What ethnicity does that sound? O'Brien. Caucasian. All right, Irish. Yeah. All right. Papandragopoulos, I guess is how you say that? That's pretty good. That's not German. Right? That's not German. It sounds Scandinavian. To me, that sounds Greek. All right. Then down here, we got some names that sound Polish. There's a Hispanic sounding name. So it's implying that all these people from all over the world are Americans. And they all need to unite as one. All right. This one, you've got Lady Liberty there. Actually, that's might be the British Union Jack, I believe. But she's saying silence. Says, do not talk when you know that your unit is making preparations for an attack. Don't talk to about two, don't talk about them two men in other units or strangers and keep your mouth shut, especially in public places. Do not be inquisitive about what other units are doing. If you hear or see anything, keep it to yourself. If you hear anyone else talking about operations, stop him at once. The success of the operations and lives of your comrades depend on your silence. Why are they saying you better keep your mouth shut about what your unit is doing? Because somebody might be spies. All right, they might be spies, right? You never know who's going to be a spy ready to basically turn your information over to the Germans or somebody else that might intercept maybe a convoy of troops that's going to mainland Europe. All right, RJ brought up the 
a Marine slogan. All right, here's a World War One era Marine poster. And you see down here, it says James Montgomery flag with the signature. It's the same guy that's on that Uncle Sam poster over there. Hunts kill women and children. All right, yeah, Huns kill women and children. There's new paper headlines. So what's it look like this guy's doing? You better you take it off and go to work. All right. Go yeah, getting angry, making it look like the Marines are the defenders of innocent women and children. All right. Notice this is another way it's showing that people can help the war effort even if they can't go fight in the war. So, so you can make clothes. Exactly. Make things like socks to support the war effort. All right. I like this one because it's trying to play on people's basically guilt. You got a guy that's sitting there in a nice tuxedo. So it looks like maybe a wealthy young man. What's he looking at out the window? All right. Yeah. These are men that have been listed. So there's people in the military says on which side of the window are you. So it's kind of implying that if you don't enlist, what are you doing? Just watching. watching. You're just watching, right. You're not really doing your job to support your country. All right. There's another one making the enemy look less human. It says, must children die and mothers plead in vain? Buy more liberty bonds, saying that your money can help win the war. All right. This one's a German poster. You see it's got a German soldier Choking somebody that's supposed to be, I would guess, a French officer, maybe a British sailor, and a Russian soldier. Of the foreign posters, I'll eat this one the best. It's a German poster where you've got a baby, and what's happening to that baby? All right, he's about to get bit by a cobra. And that little hat will lead us to believe that cobra is a French soldier. And what does that quote say? Think of your children. Think of your children, right. So that's encouraging German people to sign to fight for the war. Basically saying if you don't, this venomous French cobra is going to come and, I guess, kind of eat your children. All right, here's an Australian poster. And I think this is kind of probably the biggest example of dehumanization. All right, you've got, again, that German helmet. So we know that's supposed to be a German soldier. But does that look in any way human? No. No, it looks like some gorilla or something like that with bloody arms, you know, um, baring its teeth. And the question mark is basically, what's going to happen? And Australia did send a significant number of troops to support the Allies in World War I. But you got blood dripping all over the world, implying that the Germans are going for world domination. So it's up to the Allies to stop that. All right.